Welcome back everyone. We are now under a week away from the NBA draft, and at this point, it appears pretty likely the Lakers will keep their first round draft pick. I mean, there's even been talk about them looking to trade up in the draft. Now, I don't find that very likely, but it does tell you about the interest they have in keeping their first round draft pick. And whether they trade up, trade down, or simply remain where they're at right now, I think they'll be very open-minded. Something they were not during last year's draft in my opinion. Now, I for one have not given up on Jalen Hood Shafino quite yet, but I do think they're a bit too set on drafting him. I mean, it's pretty obvious that he was the guy they wanted, and that kind of gave them tunnel vision, with them passing up on a guy like Cam Whitmore, who ended up dropping all the way down for being a projected top 8 pick, all the way down to 20th. Now, don't get me wrong, the Lakers are not the only team that got it wrong here, but I think they should take that as a learning opportunity. Simply put, you gotta take the best guy available sometimes even if that player is not on top of your draft board. And while they might have a similar opportunity again this year, with many predicting that Ron Holland, a player that has been widely compared to Cam Whitmore, could fall out of the draft lottery entirely, potentially falling to pick 17, which again, is where the Lakers are currently picking at. And if that were to happen, I think they should take a long hard look at drafting him. In fact, it might even be a no brainer after what happened last time. And with that in mind, we are going to talk about the argument for the Lakers drafting the best player available, which in this case, might end up being Ron Holland. But before we get too far into it, if you are looking for a place to talk about everything Lakers and NBA related, then don't forget to check out our NBA Discord. Or if you don't have Discord, then feel free to follow me on Twitter to hear my thoughts on everything NBA related. There will be a link for both of them in the video description down below. But without further ado, let's dive right into it. And we'll begin by taking a basic overview of Ron Holland. And if you have no idea who he is, Ron Holland is a 6 foot 8 combo forward that has one of the highest ceilings in the entire draft. And after all, he is one of the youngest players in the entire draft too, being 18 years old for another 3 weeks. And flashback to a year ago, Ron Holland was the number 2 ranked prospect in the entire 2024 draft class. Though unfortunately for him, his stock has taken a bit of a tumble throughout the past year. Rather than going the college route, he played for the G League Ignite, which has kind of become known for lowering draft stock rather than raising it. And well, that's what happened to Ron Holland. In reality though, I think a whole bunch of people are overreacting. I mean, it's not like the guy completely fell apart. In fact, he led their entire team in points per game, putting up over 20 of them in 14 total games, and on not too bad efficiency too, shooting over 44% from the field. However, the problem that many had with him was 3 point shooting. He only shot 24% for 3, and whether you're looking at the regular season or the showcase cup, that did not improve either way, he was simply not a good 3 point shooter. And even though I really do like Ron Holland, that's something I cannot completely overlook. Simply put, in the modern NBA you need to be able to shoot from 3, and especially if we're talking about a wing player. Now don't get me wrong, you can still be a role player and not be a great 3 point shooter, but if he ever hopes to become a 30 plus minute per game kind of guy, then he does need to develop that 3 point shot. Because if not, then there's really only so much you can do with him. Even if you're an elite defender like Jared Vanderbilt, you still won't be matchup proof. There are going to be matchups and your team cannot keep you on the court, and that is something we do need to keep in mind with Ron Holland. Though I do believe there's room for improvement and optimism here too. I don't think he even has a bad shooting motion. I actually think it looks pretty good. There is nothing that needs to be fixed here in my opinion. And well, that should mean him simply needing more reps. Now you obviously can never guarantee that, but I would be willing to take that risk. I mean, it's not like the guy is a 4 year college player with a broken jump shot. He is not even 19 yet with only one glaring issue offensively, and I for one can live with that. And if you look beyond the 3 point shooting, there is a lot of talent here already. The guy is simply a blur on offense, having a lightning quick first step, and then being great at finishing around the rim. And boy oh boy is the guy ever fun to watch in the open court. If you get Ron Holland to lane to the rim, then he is going to throw down a monstrous dunk, which he might even do if a defender is right in front of him. I know a lot of people have been comparing him to Cam Whitmore, which I kind of do agree with, but I really see a young Trevor Ariza here, both from his height and length along with his style of play as well being a little bit shaky of a 3 point shooter, but then being an absolutely elite athlete. And yes, that does translate to him playing defense too. But a little bit more with him on offense, Holland can be a great slasher. He is good at knowing when to cut back door, and then again, there is no doubt about his ability to finish around the rim. And that could very well become his calling card while he develops. Now he might have been the one to create his own shot up until this point, but being a good backdoor cutter is an underrated NBA skill. 
even without a three-point shot, that can make him an effective off-ball player, and I think that is what he will have to rely on for a year or two. Another thing worth mentioning here be his playmaking ability, but I think it's neither a pro nor con at this point. Some people are worried about him having a fairly high turnover rate, but I think that mostly came down to him playing with an unorganized team, which is really what the G League Ignite became known for. Though I do think they showed potential. He might not have been a pure playmaker or anything like that, but he was a very willing passer. Having the core vision and reaction time to recognize when to both pass out, along with simply being able to find open shooters. Though again, it did come with some volatility. Moving on to defense though, he might not be the elite one-on-one -on -one defender that Trevor Ariza was, or at least not yet anyways, but he does make a similar impact in the passing lanes. Believe it or not, the guy grabbed two and a half steals per game, ranking second in the entire G League. And not only that, but he showed the ability to be a really good help side defender as well, averaging over one block per game throughout the G League showcase. And even apart from all that, his ability to recover on defense can make him a great defender if he commits to doing it. In my opinion, the guy really has all the tools to be an elite defender. Now, I'm not sure if that will ever happen given his preference and ceiling on offense, but there definitely is two-way potential here, and that alone could get him playing time early on. Like I mentioned before with Trevor Ariza, that is what got him on the court during the early part of his career. Now, I know we tend to remember him as the Model 3 and D player, but it took him until year number 8 to shoot over 35% from 3. Now, we are talking about a different style of play back then, but you can always find a role for a great athlete that commits to playing defense, which I think Ron Holland could do. And unlike Cam Whitmore, Ron Holland is 6 foot 8 with a near 6 foot 11 wingspan, meaning he will be able to match up with bigger wing players from day one. The guy might even be able to match up 1 through 4 from the get go, too. And much like the Thompson brothers, they offer quite a bit of value from that alone during their rookie years. And much like a young Trevor Ariza, that came without offering reliable 3 point shooting, with both a man and a Zer Thompson shooting under 20% from 3. Now, I'm not sure that Holland is quite the rebounder that either of those two are, but he did grab nearly 7 of them per game in the G League. And if he could be a committed, switchable defender, a good rebounder, and then a good backdoor cutter offensively, I think he could fill a 20 minute per game kind of role in your number 1. Now, I know there might be a little bit of overlap here with him and Jared Vanderbilt, but again, I don't think you can nor should pass up in this kind of opportunity. There is by no means a guarantee that Holland will fall to them at 17th, but as shown what happened with Cam Whitmore, you never know what might happen. Or even beyond that, he would be a great target for them if they traded up. And with all that being said, what do you guys think? How do you feel about the idea of drafting Ron Holland, either with him dropping to 17th overall, or if the Lakers will trade up to the draft lottery? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and hit that notification bell to never miss out when I upload a video. But as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.